I, I called him for them to go out. And yesterday I went to the Canton Home Heritage Festival. We meant to go Saturday night because they had a couple of really good things <coughs> Saturday. And one of my kids wasn't feeling good. Good morning. It's raining. Welcome to the Haywood County Board of Commissioners meeting for September 8, 2015. We'll begin with the Pledge of uh, Allegiance. Could everyone, please stand. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we just thank you for this day. Lord, I pray that you give us wisdom as we make decisions for our county. Dear Lord, help us to have a, a servant attitude in all that we do. Lord, I pray for our staff and I pray for our employees. Lord, we pray for our law enforcement and our emergency uh, folks who uh, help protect us and, and serve us, Lord. We just pray that you watch over them and protect them. We pray for our troops that are overseas and for their families and keep them safe and bring them home safely. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Yep. Okay, we'll begin today with a uh, public hearing regarding the consideration of the construction of a public services training facility at Haywood Community College pursuant to an installment financing contract in a principal amount not to exceed $4.1 million. Julie? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We've talked about this particular project for a, a number of um, months, actually, and I have actually had one public hearing. The uh, bids came in on the project. They came in higher, and we had a good discussion in the last board meeting about the, uh, the bids and the project. So um, I think I'm going to just read a really short statement, and then you can open it up. A notice of public hearing to receive public comments on the proposed execution and delivery by the County of A, an installment financing contract to pay for the construction of a public services training facility at Haywood Community College, and B, create a security interest in all or a portion of the real property on which the project is located, was published on August 28, 2015, stating that the Board of Commissioners would hold a public hearing thereon on September 8, 2015. Now, the cost of the project, the new cost, the increased project, is approximately $5.3 million with an anticipated loan amount of $4.1 million. There are other sources of funds. The community college has some flood settlement funds and some insurance proceeds, and there are some state um, capital project funds. So the installment loan is uh, 4.1. The estimated debt service to repay this is approximately 450,000 per year, and it is to be repaid from the sales tax proceeds that have been dedicated for community college projects. Okay. You're right. We've talked about this uh, at length. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I think we have Dr. Barbara Parker is here. Uh, do you have anything you'd like to say, Dr. Parker? Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Um, again, you all have said we've discussed this several times. Um, the bids did come in over budget, and the purpose of us uh, asking for a higher loan is just to meet that higher budget. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, is there anyone else present who would care to comment? Yes. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. On behalf of the Haywood County Emergency Services Council, of which I serve as president, we appreciate the commissioners and the college trustees working together to support this. We had several that wanted to attend this morning, but as volunteers, they have other jobs, so they weren't able to be here. But we thank you and the uh, college for their efforts to make this happen. Okay. Thank, you. thank you. Anyone else? <laughs> Any board members have any uh, additional comments that they'd like to make? I don't know if Barbara said it or not, but their board has voted and, and passed this after, because we had our discussion in the last meeting, and, and, this, and the board, I just want to mention to make sure that everybody knew that. Good point. I got a question if she wants to come back up. Okay. <clears throat> Dr. Parker? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. He, uh, there's a question uh, Commissioner Sorrells has. When we uh, discussed this a couple weeks ago, and you know, pretty thoroughly, uh, there was some uh, 
discussion or thoughts that it might go back and look at, you know, rebidding it separately or whatever. And, you know, obviously y'all did not choose to do that. And uh, I guess my question is, is, you know, was there reasoning, I mean, enough uh, or some reason that you didn't think that it would come in or there would be some potential savings there? I think that the concern of the board uh, was that if they waited to rebid, they, they did discuss potentially rebidding, um, and they, they felt it was a risk um, to wait, that it could go up even more. And so I think the decision was to, to move forward. If they had have chosen to go back out for bid, how long, I mean, was that a process or would it have been just a split it up and send it back out? I mean, would it have been a very lengthy I'm gonna process? I'm going to ask Breck. Breck, can you speak to that, please? Uh, the rebidding process, I think the board, we looked at a couple options with the uh, architect, Pageant Freeman. If we split the project up, uh, we were looking at a couple of months for rebidding, um, and that's just splitting it up and bidding it as two pieces, as is, same mm -hmm. exact uh, documents as before. If we looked at altering, you know, which which would make less sense going back and uh, changing some things, we were looking at anywhere from uh, probably six to eight months to get that work done and then get uh, uh, state construction office approvals uh, to go back out. So we're, it was fairly significant time frames and based on some recent case studies from Pageant Freeman, they felt um, they did not feel confident that that we would get lower prices if we went back out even uh, as is immediately. So, If it had gone back out, would it have been possible for smaller contractors to have bid it? Uh, possibly if we had split it up into two two separate pieces, but if, if we had done so, uh, we were looking at possibly building the burn building this year, having to wait another year or two before we did the other uh, other apparatus classroom building, which could have incurred substantial increases in that, that cost, so. There's other numbers that, uh, you know, that I could ask, but you know, it's, it is what it is. So anyway. Well, I, I wasn't here last time, but I do want to say that I, I support the, the project. It's, uh, it's unfortunate it came in over budget. And I, I did watch the last meeting in its entirety and I watched the discussion. Um, I think, you know, we, we, we did make a promise or there was promises made that this building would be done. Uh, for the quarter cent sales tax when it was passed. So, and I am glad to see that the community colleges, I feel like they should be concentrated on the trades and the trade jobs that we have. Uh, and I feel like this pro project is doing that. So the, the, since I've been a commissioner of the projects at the community college, does, it seems like they've left out, you know, our, our hardworking jobs and, and trade jobs and things. And um, for other projects that I, and I feel like this, this gets y'all back to your mission of, uh, you know, of uh, educating, uh, a community college should educate people for the trades that are here. And uh, I do feel good that it's for EMS and law enforcement who are trying to protect and, and save lives. So, uh, you know, I, I support the project in that, in that vein, if you will. But I do appreciate the community college getting back to what I feel like they should be is doing the trades. And um, so I, I support that. Anything else? Just one comment, Mr. Lanning, the, the burn building, I can see now the problem of rebidding, you still got the problem with the burn building with the expertise that you have to have in order to build that building. It's not, you know, the concrete's a different density and all that. Am I correct in that, uh, getting the correct. people? Correct, yeah, it's a fairly complex structure, especially for smaller builders. We did speak with a few smaller builders to get uh, an idea, a lot of them were not real comfortable with those construction types. We've got um, basically suspended slabs, precast suspended slabs, uh, because you can't use a corrugated metal deck because it's galvanized. There's different materials that you can't use in a facility like that. So in splitting it up, you know, we might have incurred some issues with that as far as getting uh, bidders that felt comfortable doing it, as well as if we had the burn building built without the other portion 
logistically, I think we'd have a problem if it were, say, a year or two before we could build that other portion just in having the facilities, like the, the burn building doesn't have restrooms in it. Um, in order to have that functional, we'd have to build restrooms. So there, there were going to be some changes regardless um, if we did that facility first. Uh, just because of those time frames in between, it would not be usable without the restroom shower facility. So we'd had to move those, add those to the other building. So those were those were some of the things we looked at. The uh, architects and and the um, the low bidder, including the alternates, is currently they have agreed to uh, as we pursue this further. They're going to look into some options as far as value engineering, if uh, things that would not affect the functionality of it whatsoever, it'd be more cosmetic. Um, so they're, they're, they are exploring some options and any of those savings obviously would reduce the, the overall cost and we'd just pay that money back towards the debt service of the loan, anything we can save. So we're looking at, uh, at possibilities there. Or do you have anything else? Well, <clears throat> I was just going to make a, a general comment by the, about the construction costs. I mean, we've seen the economy change over the years, but um, historically there has not been that much of a reduction, if any, in construction costs. And, uh, for example, if we were to construct any of the buildings that we have in the last 14 years here, I would expect that any bid that we went out for now would be more expensive than what we built it for. Um, so. I would be surprised in the future if the construction of this facility could be less than it is right now, and, and I'm sure that the board probably considered that as well. Yeah, I think any time you get into specialized construction, you have a, uh, I got one more question, okay? Um, this thing's over budget, or not over budget, but, you know, come in over what we anticipate, or what you all anticipated, uh, it's going to kind of stretch the limit of the money that can be paid or the debt service with the quarter cent sales tax. And we've not even stuck a shovel in the ground. What happens if you run into overruns? Is there a plan to be able to pay for the overruns? I mean, that's possible. There is contingency money in the budget. In I didn't think it, it was a whole lot when I looked at the... It's 5% at least. I think it is 5% in there. That's correct. Yeah, state construction recommends 5% <clears throat> on construction of this type, and we do have that allowance in there as well as some money for soils testing and those, those types of things that we might, we might have to do along, along the way in this process. Just yeah, really kind of, I mean, I'm, I, I absolutely think it's a great project. Uh, it was really for it, but I'm stuck on <laughs> How much the over the the and cost is over what the anticipation was, and uh, you know I know all along it started out as one one particular deal, and then it just kept adding to it to make it a full functional uh, thing. And I, I just you know I just got to you know worry about that, and maybe it's not for me to worry about, but you know I do. Anyone else, Julie, Ira? There's no one else who would care to uh, speak on the matter, then I'll close the public hearing and uh, it will be put, put on the next agenda for action. Yes, there will be some motions or okay. some considerations for the next agenda. <clears throat> okay. Okay, then the public hearing is closed and we'll move to the public comment session. Is anyone present who would care to address the board on any matter? Okay. Hearing none, then we'll move to constituent concerns. Bill, do you have I any? have none. Sure. I don't have any. Kevin, Michael. Uh, what couple I had, uh, Ira's uh, been handling those, but I do want to make the comment that last Thursday night, a couple of us were involved in or uh, attended the uh, Mountain Project's 50th anniversary uh, uh, celebration over at uh, Harris and Cherokee. It was an outstanding uh, event. Uh, it was interesting to see the progression since not, uh, fifth, uh, the early, when it first started, how it started and what it's doing now and, and how much it means to our county and the region and uh, the people that were uh, involved in it. Uh, it was a very, very, very good event. I want to thank those for inviting us. 
Yeah, it was a good event, for sure. Any other comments on constituent concerns? Okay, if not, then we'll move to administrative agency reports. Uh, we have uh, Ira Dove will address the Smoky Mountain Center Communications Rallying for Recovery, the inaugural Western Region Recovery Act uh, rally. Ira. Yes. Good morning, Commissioners. The Smoky Mountain Centers um, Communities Rallying for Recovery is having their inaugural uh, Western Regional Recovery Rally. This is um, for people who are recovering from uh, substance abuse and their allies. This is a very important event and one that uh, hopefully will be carried on every year uh, in a different county, and they chose Haywood County for the first one that Smokey represents. The event is Saturday, September 19th at, 20, at uh, 10 a.m. in the morning to 2 p.m. It's in the open air gym out at Lake Junaluska. There will be a lot of events there. Uh, I know the sheriff is really excited about this event. Um, and we'll be out there. There's going to be free food. There's going to be guest speakers. There's going to be activities for kids, including balloon artists and face painting. Uh, and there will be people out there who can partner and help people. Uh, the years um, that I, I spent in social services, and I know that Donna Lupton is here today. She's a social work director at social services now. Uh, taught us that if we had a magic wand in that, in that group and can solve one problem, uh, we would solve substance abuse. Most people, uh, actually most people know about it because most, most families, you don't have to look too far to find somebody who's got at least a minor problem. And this one uh, still is a, a big concern in our county and all of our counties. And the support that we can show as a community is vital not only to the success of this event, but to the success of our community in overcoming uh, this issue. So I'd just like to say on Saturday, September 19th, uh, at the Lake Junaluska Open Air Gym at 10 in the morning, we hope to uh, see some folks from our county. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions or comments for Ira? Okay, do we have any adjustment to the agenda today? Okay, hearing none, we'll move to the consent agenda. We've had the opportunity to review the August 17, 2015 regular meeting minutes. Are there any changes to those? <clears throat> okay, we'll move then to the second item of uh, budget amendment. Uh, Julie? I have one budget amendment today, and it's for the Tax Collections Department. Um, this past year was the first year we had a full year of collections of uh, motor vehicle taxes that were collected by the state, and we had a real good sense of our um, amount budgeted now. We didn't have it when we were doing the budget. We were expecting about $2.4 million. It actually came in at $2.7 million. Uh, the amounts collected by the state. So that gives us a little bit extra money in the current fiscal year to put toward um, some tax collections or actually whatever we need to. However, there are a couple of things that we need to address. Um, one of them is the fee to the state for collecting the motor vehicle taxes. The more taxes they collect, the higher the fee. So I'm um, putting in 40000 to increase the 90000 amount up to 130000 That's the amount the state keeps from the motor vehicle taxes. But it also gives me a little bit of money, 30000 that's really needed in the tax collections department to pay some paralegal work to help um, bring in collections. So a total of uh, 70000 is um, increasing the budget, both on the revenue and the expense size. Any questions there? Okay. We'll move to the third item of the consent agenda, Health and Human Services Agency contracts over $50,000. Uh, Ira? Yes. Um, every year there are a number of contracts that are, are needed to go forward with the business of Health and Human Services. Uh, the first contract that I would submit for your approval, and this is a company we have contracted with for a number of years to provide Medicaid medical transportation. The funding is entirely from federal funds, and it's for $70,000. The next contract that I would submit for your approval uh, is for Haywood Vocational Opportunities. Uh, this, again, is from federal funds for job readiness, development, and training. 
uh, for eligible workforce participants. Um, for those who are not able to immediately go out and find a job or participate in some of the stuff with the Employment Security Commission, this contract is necessary so that we can meet the participation rate for our county and provide services to them. And it's for 90000 and it's federal funds as well. Next, we have uh, a contract with Mountain Projects. Mountain Projects is one of the large Medicaid uh, transportation providers in our counties. Again, it's uh, federal funding, and these are people who qualify for Medicaid medical transportation. And they have a, a lot of lift vans and other things that make it really convenient for people that can't take some of the other modes. Okay. Chip, you've looked at these? Yes, I discussed these with our. These are standard contracts that I've looked at in years past, and they're, he, he said that they were basically the same, so we've discussed them. But I didn't personally look at them, but he looked at them, and they're okay. just likely ones I've approved in the past. These are state form contracts that have about 20 subparts. Right. <laughs> any questions of IRA on any of the three contracts? Okay. We'll move to the fourth item. Uh, IRA? Uh, the fourth item is bringing forward your approval um, a contract with a board member of the Health and Human Services Board. Uh, Ms. Huber uh, has contracted for a number of years prior to becoming a board member uh, for providing child and family team meeting services and for interpretation. There are that combination of skills, being able to interpret Spanish and be able to conduct a social work child and family team meeting um, is a rare combination. And there, I don't know if there's anybody else qualified in our county to perform the service uh, candidly. Uh, and it's a, for $8,500. The statutory reference, um, there's a procedure when you have a, a board member of, a, of an agency, um, and one of, the, one of the procedures is it would have to go through that board, and they approved it on August 18th, 2015. It would have to go through this board, and then it's going to have to be posted at the courthouse that this contract was uh, made. We would recommend it for the reason, like I said, that there just aren't uh, people that can do this. The other thing to keep in mind is that since the uh, Health and Human Services Agency changed its structure. They're not voting on contract matters, and the personnel authority would run through the county manager's office, not through that board. So uh, it's a little different than even it used to be with social services in terms of the contracting authority. Those, that would come through my office as well as personnel. So it takes a little even more of the conflict out of this. But I would ask for your approval for that. <clears throat> any questions or observations? Okay, any uh, questions on the consent agenda? If not, we'd entertain a motion that the consent agenda as presented be approved. So moved. Second? Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, <clears throat> thank you. We have no old business, so we'll move to new business. Uh, the first item being uh, requesting approval of the of a contractor for um, the 9-11 EOC radio tower project, Del Burris. Good morning. Yes, I'm here to request the approval of the contractor. This is not to award the contract this time. I do not have the contract with, uh, have not received the contract. This is award to approve Advanced Wireless Solutions Incorporated as the lowest responsible responsive bidder. Um, you will see in the attachments uh, that on bid day they were the actual lowest uh, bidder for the project. I did provide all their information. Also, as you look through this, Mission Critical Partners, which is helping us, helping Haywood County with this grant, has actually concurred and reviewed on their um, rating model that they rate for tower installers and they had one company that actually um, replied back to the, back, uh, the reference check, and uh, they did a uh, public safety grade radio tower as well. Uh, there's multiple stages in this once we get, once the award for advanced wireless is in place. Um, you know, once we get them under contract, they have to do a design. It has to go to the town of Waynesville planning and zoning and testify to them that the 140-foot tower is required. So this is just the first step, and then I'll bring back the contract at the next meeting for the uh, Board of Commissioners approval, and I'll send it to 
Mr. Killian prior to that for review, verify. My understanding from them that is they'll send it in a standard AIA document so it makes it much easier for all of us to be able to review. Or it does for me. I'm, I'm not an attorney, but it does for me. Okay. Any questions of Dale? Notice all the, <coughs> the, the bid prices were pretty close together, so. Yeah, they, they were all really close together, and that's the reason why the scoring matrix uh, come into play and really worked out for mission critical partners. Uh, I, I'll be honest, I'm, this will be the first time I've ever been involved with constructing a tower. Uh, as far as the base part goes, concrete and steel, I think I can figure that one out. But whenever you start going above a certain limit of height, that's above my expertise. If there's no questions or comments, then would it entertain a motion that Advanced Wireless Solutions Incorporated be approved as the uh, lowest responsible responsive bidder for the 9-11 EOC radio tower project in the amount of $125,502. And um, I mentioned this as state grant funds that would be paying for this. That is correct. So would entertain that motion. So move. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. <clears throat> The second item um, of new business is a contract with Spatalist, Spatalist? Okay. Spatalist. appraisal and comparison software for real property reevaluation. David Francis. Good morning, commissioners. Hope everybody had a good holiday weekend. The, um, before you have uh, actually have two contracts uh, with uh, Spatalist, and I'll, let me uh, tell you the difference between the two. Specialist is a company that it has a helpful reevaluation tool. And why we are here is we have looked at purchasing new software for the tax office for several years. Uh, if uh, uh, Chairman Swan, you may remember we uh, met with these folks one time and it was uh, close to $780,000 for the new software. And I got shook off real quick with that. We went back, uh, negotiated with them a couple of years later, still $500,000. Came back again, we got down to $400,000, but you know, due to you know, the, the budget issues, we just said, you know, listen, we'll make do with what we've got. But this uh, company will help us do something a lot better. It'll help us do reevaluation a lot better. It will help us do uh, comparable sales for folks and show them how the, the uh, reevaluation works. So what Specialist does, that it sits on top of our GIS mapping program, or ESRI. It sits on top of that and uses that data and that information from that to compare sales and to compare neighborhoods. We are doing neighborhood delineation, again, for the next uh, reevaluation. And what this does will help the appraiser take the sales in that neighborhood, take the analysis that that appraiser's done, and review that. So what this ha happens is that upon the mapping software, it will populate and says, all right, here's all the uh, you know, homes in your area, but you've got this house out here, this one house out here, there's something different about it. What's different about it? Why is it more here? And so it gives the appraiser a chance to go look at that and just say, all right, oh, this was a four bedroom, three bath house with a thousand more square feet in the neighborhood than, than what was in there. It'll, it'll be able to tell that appraiser immediately what the differences are and if there was a mistake that, that was made in, in any entry. It takes that kind of information. So what we're getting is data analysis and analytical information that we've never had. Even though we finished last year at a sales ratio of 99%, so we're still spot on for the reevaluation re of 2011. You know, the appraisers did a great job. This gives us a better tool to uh, assess and do our uh, mass appraisal. And if you remember a couple of uh, years ago, uh, some of the folks came in here talking about the Mecklenburg reval was incorrect and you know, wanted us to go back and undo it. The specialist is the company that Mecklenburg called in to help them uh, do the analysis of their reevaluation. You know, they're still uh, actually uh, mailed out a round of bills at the uh, 1st of May again, so they're still working on that. 82% of Mecklenburg's uh, bills were right. 
but they're still uh, working through that. But Specialist is the company they called in to get the first uh, eye on what was wrong with uh, the reevaluation. The second part of that is a, a program called Comper. And what that does if a taxpayer, property owner, comes in and says, I'd like to pull, uh, you know, for you to give the comps uh, for my property, it will give the appraiser can go and tell what the subject property is and pull the three comps that are in that neighborhood or comps that are similar to uh, that home immediately. And so instead of getting these big green property record cards, they'll actually be reduced down to where it looks like a fee appraiser. It'll be on an eight and a half by 11 uh, piece of paper with the subject property and the three appraisals there. And we'll be able to hand those out and have a better explanation for that because this property record card, it, it is hard to read, you know, and you have to spend a lot of time, you know, uh, learning it, understanding it. And when you're new coming into the office, like, I don't understand, it takes a lot of time. So this will save the uh, property owners and the assessor's office a lot of time in doing, uh, you know, their comparable analysis uh, for the folks when they come in and ask for that. So. Any questions? So this, this program, this new program will probably help and, you know, you say we're 99 percent as far as the sales ratio goes, mm -hmm. but then you've got situations where if you take 10 different sales mm -hmm. and, you know, one sale might be 50,000 over, another 50,000 under, mm -hmm. well, you're, if you take all of them together, you're right at 100 percent. So mm -hmm. you're, you're close. All right, right. I mean, you're, you're spot on, but you're really not spot on as far as the individual properties go. Okay. So you're saying that this right here may help in, in resolving some of those mm -hmm. situations, some of the yeah. single individual homes or lots that are. And, and what it does too, it has a time trending function as, a, as, as a too. So let's say that the, you know, the $50,000 house uh, or over what the value is sold in uh, October of 13. And then we have a $50,000 house that was sales in October of 15. And so our trending analysis we can see is, is the neighborhood going this way, the trending analysis will show if it's going the other way. So this, we're, I mean, we're going to have a very high functioning program that will be able to do trend analysis, regression modeling, which is an advanced sales comparison uh, ratios that, uh, that you know, we get from the state level uh, when we need it. But this, this will have it built in here uh, to, to our office. Is that, did I answer? Did I get close? Yeah, I, I just want to reiterate how difficult, and I've said this several times in the last how many years, how difficult it is to do mass appraisals. Of, we were talking the other day, 36,000 different residences we have here. Mm -hmm. That doesn't include the number of lots that we have here that have to be appraised. And to be, and to be accurate and spot on as to what the value of something is, especially in today's market, and what I see is mm -hmm. it, it, it's extremely difficult mm -hmm. to do that. And, uh, and I think the county makes as many efforts as they can to, to make sure it's accurate and you still can't get it right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, no. you just, you're still not going to get it exactly what a willing buyer is willing to pay a, a willing seller. Yeah. That in of itself is uh, something that's very difficult is, is the value. You look at it, you see a value and you want to buy it. I see a different value mm -hmm. and that's, it's hard to do, as you point out. But, the, the terrain is so diverse. I mean, mm -hmm. A lot of times families will have me divide properties equally and it's like you know, you've got a little bit of flat and you've got a lot of mountain and, or a little bit of mountain, you know, it's, it's hard. Uh, just on an individual parcel to try to get yeah. it even. But David, I want to ask you one thing. Yeah. The software that you're talking about with the card, is that from the 70s or 80s? The program that it's, we use is from 1978, Good Eye. Uh, it was EDS, it was the old Ross Perot uh, <laughs> uh, company. Uh, and so we're, we're still using it. We've, uh, it's a good chassis. Yeah. It, it is yeah. a good chassis. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles that, uh, you know, we'd certainly like um, in today's times. Um, but we've added a, a few things that have helped, um, you know, along the way uh, to make it easier. We've done some uh, different things with the accounts receivable uh, to have a more robust program there. But uh, so, you know, since we're not being able to go, you know, get, you know, get the, the, the big product, I think this is a great step you know, to, to help uh, the uh, appraiser's office and uh, with uh, what's going well, on. But, you know, when you look, like you were saying, mm -hmm. you, you know, it was a big price tag. Mm -hmm. And the reason, you know, we, and we don't do it, but we are, we are, we are using software from the late 70s. I mm -hmm. mean, yeah. 
I mean, a lot of people that are paying taxes now weren't even born then. Yeah, so, I think, yeah. um, like Kirk, I think it, you know, it, I don't know. If I think the good. public's got a lot of value out of that program. <laughs> I was ten. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, really? The, the, you look so young. Yeah, plus. the the uh, yearly maintenance fee. Yeah, yeah. The, the yearly maintenance fee will be twenty-one thousand uh, dollars, fifteen thousand dollars per per year for Comper, and then six thousand dollars for the maintenance. So fifteen was what now? Fifteen thousand for Comper. That's the name of the, the comparable uh, uh, program, and then six thousand uh, dollars a year for the maintenance. So, so it has to be really to, to be accurate. It has to be done every year. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah, it does. And, yeah. and then, and then it's yeah, and it, it's a very live version because it's sitting on top of that, that, that mapping program. We'll be able to bring, you know, the ESRI program in, and then we have another program called Pictometry that is for our public safety uh, that has uh, oblique imagery, which is, you know, we, uh, the maps are orthos on top. Oblique is taking the picture from the sides. Uh, so we have a five-dimensional, uh, you know, you can get the east, west, and on, on top of that, those programs. And it also will sit down with uh, Google, Google Maps as well. Uh, some of you may have used those. We don't have you know, uh, it's called walking a man. We'll be able to use those maps and incorporate those in as well. You have maintenance fees now on this existing software that we're using? Uh, yes, sir. We have a, a contract for our Keystone program that runs about $30,000 a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. We're really coming out yeah, way this, ahead, yeah. plus we're getting uh, top-of-the-line software, cutting edge. Very uh, cutting edge. Very, uh, vast improvement. Mm -hmm. That, that, if, okay. If you had had this in the last revamp, this this program, how would it have helped you? Think, Show people when, uh, yeah, why my property, you know, went down, and mm -hmm. others why my mine went up. Yeah, because it, yeah, it would it, it puts it in very plain layman's terms. Instead of getting this green card, you'll see, you know, that the houses are a three two that it's you know of a, of, a, of a similar grade and quality. You know, you'll be able to see those right away instead of thumbing through this and trying to figure it out or having the appraiser sit there and go through line by line with that. It'll, it'll be, like I said, if you've seen a fee appraiser, it's going to look very, very similar to that. So. Well, right. Serving on the board of ENR uh, previously, um, folks would come in and would be sometimes upset because they didn't understand this card. Yeah. And it's Greek, I'm telling you. That is mm -hmm. difficult. Yeah. And once they understood the card, once you explain it, then they're fine. Mm -hmm. So anything that can make that simpler yeah. is going to be better. Yeah. So it, it takes you know the information from the the Keystone, the Esri, the pictometry, and puts that all together. There's no way that we would have the time, and it, it could make that kind of commitment to put this kind of an analyst uh, analysis together for this. Uh, for this, there's just no way. Okay. So, Mr. Chairman, if I may ask a clarifying question. Um, We'll still need the Keystone program with this. Correct, correct, yeah. Correct, the 38,000, because I think that was a, just a point that needs to be clear. We have the older software, the Keystone, will still work with this. So this is mostly to help solidify the reval part of the thing. Thank you. Yeah, yeah because the, the, the Keystone is actually part of the CAMA, the, the uh, computer-assisted uh, mass appraisal. And plus, they does the uh, tax for the uh, AR, the collections, and the uh, assessing on the personal property side. So that Keystone program does everything on all three offices. Okay. So. Any other comments or questions? I will point out that this was a budgeted item, uh, as reflected in the 2015-16 uh, fiscal year budget. So, if no further questions, then would uh, entertain a motion for approval of the contract with Specialist Appraisal and Comparison Software in the amount of sixty thousand dollars for real property revaluation. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, David. Okay. We'll continue with David for um, uh, approval of water tap fees and um, plumbing supply line connections to supply city water uh, to folks who live near the Francis Farm landfill. David. Okay. Back in 2009, when we uh, started looking at the, the uh, problems and um, the issues out at Francis Farm, we uh, discovered at that time that there was some folks out there that did not have city water. There was water that had been run out there uh, back uh, earlier part of the 90s, but some of those folks didn't hook up at the time. 
And the, uh, as we've worked through this, um, I've heard the concerns of the board and the, the public out there. And I think that it's a good idea that we go ahead um, and connect these remaining uh, folks out there to where they would have city water and there will not ever be a worry again. Um, as we've said, we know the demarcation of the uh, amount of pollution and where it is, but out of you know abundance of caution, um, and I uh, commend the board for uh, their insight in, uh, to uh, doing this, and I think it is a good program. So we will have to uh, pay tap fees for the town of Waynesville, and we've agreed to run the supply line up to the, the subject houses, uh, you know, if, if they agree. Um, we, um, Chip and I have some work to do on getting the easements and the contracts done, but uh, this is the, the step in the right direction. Okay. Yeah. Total would be $16,669. That's correct. And this would basically, basically relieve us of any future liability um, resulting correct. from contamination from the landfill. That's correct, sir. Okay. Any questions or comments on that? Okay. Hearing none, then would uh, entertain a motion that we approve the amount of $16,669 to provide water tap fees and plumbing supply lines uh, to provide to supply city water to the, those homes in question. I move. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. And we'll follow that up then with a budget amendment to pay for it, Julie. You all probably have noticed that um, over the years, actually, on the monthly capital project reports that we send to you, there's a water and sewer capital project that has $16,669 sitting in the fund balance. It's one that had more money in um, previously. It's the old West Canton water and sewer project. We've um, given 40000 to the town of Canton related to some um, uh, water or sewer lines uh, at some point. 16669 is really not enough to do a major capital project. So it would be good to move it after, out of the capital project fund. And this amount for the TAP fees is so close. It wasn't exactly the 16669 but I thought this would be a good opportunity to close out this capital project fund, transfer the entire amount into the solid waste special revenue fund <clears throat> so that we could use it for these TAP fees. That West Canton, that was, I think this board sat as the uh, yeah. directors or whatever. Directors or whatever. Yeah, that that this was a long on. time ago. Yeah, it 2002. Was a, was yeah, it yeah. was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Uh, any questions of Julie? If not, then we'd entertain a motion that the budget amendment as described be approved. Second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. That completes our agenda. Is there any other business before we entertain a motion to go into closed session? Okay, hearing none, I would entertain a motion to enter into closed session for personnel 143-318.11A6 and economic development 143-318.11A4. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. That's unanimous. Okay. I do not. We have returned from closed session. Is there any other business for the board? If not, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor say aye. 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 We're adjourned.